Hello everybody, welcome back to the ASUS RG YouTube page. This is JJ once again. Today I've got something pretty cool for you. I'm going to give you a little bit of a basic rundown on some of the cool functionality that's offered by ROG Connect. ROG Connect is a connectivity feature that's available to us on our Crosshair 5 Formula Series motherboard. Uh, we're going to go ahead and be utilizing the USB connection method that's available for ROG Connect on this board. Now, when it was originally introduced, it was focused at diehard enthusiasts, overclockers, and benchmarkers as allowing you to have access to the hardware while your system was running and being able to push it and maximize your performance um, while you wouldn't be able to actually have access to the system due to it running the benchmark and not being able to get into uh, the BIOS. Um, with that, we've also continued though to evolve in terms of the functionality that's offered for. And what we're going to be discussing today isn't really so much relating to overclocking, we'll cover that in another video. More so what here we want to do is give you a little bit of a kind of a perspective at how ROG Connect can work for a normal user. I myself really love ROG Connect from a monitoring and a startup and shutdown purpose. So most users, when you're talking about when you have a system built up, you generally have your, your chassis or your case usually probably like underneath the desk or underneath the table or something along those lines. I've got a beautiful case at home. The problem is that, that it's a full tower chassis that I have down here and the power button's all the way down at the bottom. And normally that's a pain to be able to go ahead and, and bend down, go ahead and press the power button each time I want to turn on the system. The cool thing is now is that I have an RG equipped system where I have my netbook externally sitting on my desk right there and I can go ahead and actually do a lot of different things with it. So here we actually have the ROG Tweakit console available to us. Now there's a lot of different applets and we're not going to dive into all of them, we're just going to dive into a couple of them. But one of them is going to be here, the RC Remote. The RC Remote allows us to have some pretty cool functionality. First and foremost we see one is an actual start button. This actually allows us to start the system. We have another one which is a reset button which allows us to reset the system. And we have a power down button. And lastly we actually have a pretty cool one. This one right here is actually a clear CMOS button. As a lot of you know, performance-oriented motherboards such as our ROG actually have a clear CMOS button, but when you're overclocking and once it's inside of a chassis, that button doesn't do you any good because you can't utilize it. But now you can quickly and easily actually access clear CMOS functionality without having to crack open the case or do anything by, it, by just clicking that button. So we're going to go ahead and actually power on the system, and we're also going to be monitoring something else cool. You can see here we have RC Poster. RC Poster is actually doing a low-level a uh, post read where we can either do it in string or code format, code for you guys that are real enthusiasts that know your debug codes or can reference them, and string is a text-based description of what's going on. So here we can see that we have our system powered off, so we're going to go ahead and hit the start button, and we can see it's actually turned on our system. And so here it's going to say detecting memory, check CPU, and it's actually going through the process, initializing USB, loading the VGA BIOS, and we can see now our system is actually coming on, initializing the ROM, and it's actually going through the entire process, letting you know whether your system is halt or having an issue. Now in the event that there was a problem, it actually will alert you to that here, but it's actually told us it's now boot successfully. So we know that we're actually going into the operating system without any issues. Now from here, one of the other cool aspects is that I like to do it from monitoring. We have a fantastic application that comes within our boards, it's called AI Suite 2, which gives us a whole another level of monitoring and a lot of cool stuff that we can do there. But if you're somebody that maybe doesn't want to run that in, in your system tray, or don't want to have that actively running, you could have this connected externally, utilizing no resources, and you can essentially be uh, looking at all your base information. So our systems come on, but I can go ahead and see my CPU fan speed, here's the rotation, if I had other chassis fans or optional fans, they're all connected and I have a nice diagram here where I can have set all these different items and I can go ahead and monitor them, see how they're going. And once I go ahead and click the play button, it's actually going to go ahead and start recording that information and I can monitor it and save it and store it. If I want to make any adjustments, I can go to settings and I could change the different types of items that I actually want to go ahead and monitor on my system. Now those are just some of the initial functions that are available to you in ROG, uh, ROG Connect. We also have special functions like GPU Tweak It, which actually allows us to access the graphics card, where we can actually adjust the fan speed, we can overvolt it, we can overclock it. Of course, the normal functionality in ROG Connect, where we can go ahead and actually overclock the system itself, and we can make low-level adjustments in terms of voltage and bus speeds and whatnot. But we'll save that for another video. Thanks for, guys, for tuning in. If you guys have any questions or comments, definitely leave them there on the page. Please subscribe. 
uh, as well as go ahead and hit us up at asusrog.com forward slash forums.